You're one of them socialist workers, aren't you? Mm, what's the trouble? Bugger me, a yank. Well, I went to school there, but I'm as true blue as you are. Born in Queenscliff. Queenscliff, New York. <laughs> How are the women reacting to you? They're giving me a bit of a ribbing. I think they expect me to be full of American hype, <laughs> but they're okay. I was just rolling a few ciggies for young Bobby Mitchell. Her hands, you know. Mm. Well, I think all that could have been avoided with a bit more understanding. Mm. I feel sorry for the kid. Still, she's in better shape than the last time I saw her. Did you know her on the outside? I spent some time in St. Kilda a couple years back, working with the street kids. Saw a lot of Bobby, but uh, she doesn't remember me. <laughs> I had a full beard, hair down to here. I was the original corduroy kid. Went by the name of Wolfman. I can't imagine it. It's true. You're a very dedicated person, Meg. I like to think so. I don't know how you manage to keep your cool all the time. Why, I haven't seen you flustered once since I've been here. You're amazing. I suppose you'll be glad when the strike's over. No, I'd be a liar if I said otherwise. Listen, Meg, when uh, this is all over with, any chance of us getting to know each other better? I dare say our paths will cross again. Maybe. But why don't we make sure of it? We can get together for a meal or something. Well, at the moment, it's all I can do to stay awake. Huh. Should I give you more time to think about it? I really haven't got time to think about anything much at the moment. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I just remembered something I should have done a couple of hours ago. Excuse me. Say, have you had a chance to give any thought to our getting together for dinner sometime? As a matter of fact, I have. Good. What'll it be? Chinese? Italian? I'm sorry, I can't, Philip. Oh, really? I'm quite a nice bloke once you get to know me. I've never doubted that. It's just that I had a bad experience a couple of months back, and I suppose I'm still getting over it. Fair enough. When you feel that you're over it, if you, uh want to, why don't you uh, give me a call? No strings attached. Thanks. Look, I know you've always cared, despite what you say. This is just one of those things you have to get sorted out inside yourself. And you've done that, you've got friends that can help you. I haven't got any bloody friends. Marlene, Myra, Judy, me. A lot of bloody good you are. Won't be coming back after today. Look, I'd like to come back and visit you if you'll let me. If you want. Yeah, I'd like it. Hang in there, kid. I'll see you soon. I asked the department if I could come back on a regular basis and counsel the women, and they agreed. Well, that's wonderful. New staff member, eh? Uh, well, not quite. It's all voluntary. You're joking. You mean they're not paying you? Look, I don't mind, really. It's it's sort of a memorial service to Rob Somerton. Oh, well, that's nice. I'd like to ask you a favor. Ask away. I thought I could pay you back for all the help you've been by shouting you a plate of spaghetti at my favorite wine bar. I can pick your brains about some of the women here without stopping you working, and we can... Sounds very nice. Excuse me. You'll love it, Meg, I promise. They make their own pasta, and it's fantastic. But in that suburb? I mean, it's full of dropouts and uni students, isn't it? Who cares? The food is worth it. Your place is seven? Oh, well, all right. But you better make it 7.30. I'm running late with everything today. 7.30 it uh, is. I take it this place isn't formal. <laughs> You're joking. Uh, I thought so. I'll see you later. Okay. Did you want to see me, Angel? Uh, I'm sorry, Phil. I wasn't spying or anything, but I couldn't help hearing. So, uh, how's the waltzing coming? Are you really taking Mrs. Morris out? I know she's older than you. But wouldn't that be lovely? We'll okay. all be thrilled. Look, it might be an idea if you didn't spread it around. And no secrets or anything, it's just that... Well, you know. Hey, see you after marathon ends, eh? Well, I really came by to check on your welfare. Well, that's nice of you. I heard right. I mean, about the bomb. You certainly did. Fortunately, it was a hoaxer. I really wonder how their tiny minds work. Well, let's say mild chaos this afternoon stopped me from wondering anything. Well, you seem to have survived, okay? Look, I'm just about to eat. Why don't you join me? Twist my arm. Well, curried chicken? It's twisted. The pottery classes were a success. What stopped them? 
availability of teachers mainly. So you'd be happy if I had a crack at running a class or two? Yes, certainly, as long as you keep it practical. I've seen too many women in here with no basic skills and then they've got little hope of getting a job when they leave here. Oh, I agree. The classes I thought of were typing, shorthand, that sort of thing. Great. Could be a problem getting equipment, though. <sighs> Not with typing. I've got the gear all set to go. <laughs> That's marvelous. A couple more like you and we'd revolutionize the place. <laughs> well, we both benefit. It all adds to my training. The women are fun to work with. You'll have no spare time left. <sighs> no sweat. And so I figured if I can get the family together, Bobby will have a reason to get out of here and... Meg, you're not listening to a word I'm saying. Sorry, I've got work to do. I thought, at the very least, we were friends. What have I done? Nothing. Don't be ridiculous. Meg, please. Don't touch me. Don't you dare touch me. Just stay away from me. Don't you dare touch me again. Is it something I've said or done, isn't no. it? No. But there is something wrong. As a matter of fact, there is. I've been raped. Is that reason enough? I'm sorry I've been avoiding you. I'm sorry I haven't been myself. Oh, no, Meg. no, don't touch me. I, 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 I can't okay. bear. It's, it's okay. It's all right. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to do to help. I'm, I'm here if you need me. We were just, we we're growing so close, and now I. Forgive me, but are we talking about you or Meg? What do you mean, Meg? Of course. Look, I was just trying to look at it from her point of view, for God's sake. No, no, I wasn't, was I? Well, it's not an easy thing to come to terms with. Especially when it happens to someone you care about. Someone with high morals. It's so bloody hard just sitting on the sideline. Hey! Why? That's enough out of you. You bastard! Easy! Somebody found out about us, did they? I said that's enough. Are you all right? Mm. I'm afraid this is only the beginning. His whole defense is going to be based on an alleged prior association. You know what, mate? Yeah, I, just that I saw a man leaving Meg's flat the night before. I think it was him. Meg, you've spoken about five words since we left the police station. I don't believe this. I really don't believe it. I mean, you tell the police in a loud, clear voice that you saw Wright leaving here, which makes it perfectly plain for any fool to see that you believe his story. Meg, for God's sake, is that what you think? And then you have the nerve to wonder why I'm upset. It occurred to me that he was obviously about to break in when I arrived. If I'd arrived a few minutes later, I probably would have caught him red-handed. Oh, I see. And why didn't you bother to tell that to the police? If I thought for a moment that they doubted your word, I would have. Meg. I know how you feel. Oh, for God's sake, don't be so absurd. All right, then. I sympathize deeply. But you still think I was asking for it. Oh, you're the same as the rest of them. <sighs> now you're being absurd. Am I? Meg, I want to help you. Help you get over it. <sighs> but if you insist on blaming all men for what's happened to you, I can't. Well, perhaps that's what I am doing. I don't know. All I know is that I'm angry and I'm confused and I don't know who to trust. Try trusting me. Okay, maybe I better go. Okay. Good night. Oh, hey, mm, home cooking. Can anyone dig in? Sure, help yourself. I'll stick around. No, no, I'll be right. You're gonna make it, Meg. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I don't. Everything's going to be okay. You just, just have to give it time. Do you really want to help the women? Of course I do. That's why I'm here. Great. Then you teach them how to live on the doll. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know the biggest problem when you get out of this place? Looking after yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. We don't buy our own food. We don't put a roof over our heads. Mm -hmm. We don't do anything we're not told to do, right? And there's no one out there to advise them. 80% blow their doll check in two days because they've got no idea how to budget. All right, now we've got something to talk about. Simple home economics. Interested? Now, are you ready to go tackle some of Joe's special of the day? Well, actually, I've just written you a note. Anne is coming to spend the night with me. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to let you back out of this dinner. Well, I can't very well leave her to just yes, get her Yes, you can, and Anne would be the first one to agree with me. All right. So can I say I have changed my mind? 
Yes, yes, you can. You can shut yourself away for as long as you like. But sooner or later, you're going to have to come to terms with what's happened. And sooner it'll be a lot easier on yourself and everyone else. Look, I'm not being heartless. It's just you can't hide yourself away and stop living. Hello, you two. Oh, you should have stayed here for dinner tonight. Ray has really outdone himself. Yeah, well, he said he'd make me something special for lunch tomorrow. Well, you're certainly in the good books, aren't you? Actually, I think he's after my body. Oh, lucky you. Oh, I'm, I'm glad I've caught you together. That new woman, Davies, she's still refusing to eat. Perhaps you could have a word with her tomorrow, Philip. It could help. Yes, of course. Well, it won't be easy. We've had cases like this before. You know, I think she's just pining away for her husband, poor thing. And, of course, the women are teasing her about missing out on the comforts of home. I mean, you know what they Yes, are. well, they could be right. I mean, you can't just bring a healthy physical relationship to a full stop without some sort of mental anguish. Oh, for heaven's sake. You're angry, aren't you? Of course not. What makes you think that? Well, you've hardly said a word all the way home. Not that I blame you. I've managed to ruin a perfectly good evening. Better think twice before taking out another neurotic woman. Meg, I'm not angry. I'm just trying my best to understand your feelings oh, without... for God's sake, understand my feelings. I mean, what hope have you got when I hardly even understand them myself? Look, I do care about you, I really do, but it's, it's all too complicated right now. I just can't handle a personal relationship. I mean, we'll still be friends. We'll see each other at work. But that's not what I want, and you know it. Look, I care, Meg. I, I can help you. I can get over this on my own. I don't need some kind of romantic therapy. Therapy? Is that what you think this is? Well, isn't it? Oh, for crying out loud, Meg. You're special. Don't you know that? Look, I could see it the first time I came in here. I, I thought you knew how I felt. At least let's talk about it. I've got work to do. Meg, tomorrow night then. No, I'll, I'll come by no, and fix... No, no. I've got night shift all week, and besides, Mrs. Reynolds is staying with me. I, I'd rather you didn't come round. I hope I'm not butting in. I just kind of get no, my stuff. No, no, of course not. I was just telling Phil here that I think Marlene's running a book. Odds on, I'd say. Yeah. Look, I figure they need something for an interest. Um, say, like, softball. Something like that. What a wonderful idea. Yeah. Help them develop some team spirit, too. Mm. Meg? This sounds like a good idea, if you can spare the time. Yeah, why not? I uh, haven't much else to do. I'll talk to Mrs. Reynolds about it. I think maybe I'd better see Mrs. Reynolds right now. <laughs> Catch you later. Right. You know, he's really a nice young chap. Meg, you can't just keep shutting yourself out of the rest of the world. I wish you'd keep your professional advice to yourself. I'm busy. I'll see you tomorrow. Tell me. Cheers. Cheers. Well, how's life amongst the fat cats on campus? Well, for the resident shrink stroke counselor, it's not so cushy, I'm afraid. Well, it's uh, suitably remunerated, of course, but it's bloody hectic. Well, I bet I can guess who your best clients are. Oh, the psych students, of course. <laughs> Off the air, half of them. <laughs> Makes you wonder how we turned out so uh, normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just lucky, mate. Tell me uh, about the vexed world of rehabilitation versus punishment. Right now, I'm afraid it's more a case of the uh, department versus me. I'm not on a salary. That is not a good way to get rich, Philip. No, but I guess it's what we do-gooders deserve, eh? <laughs> I've always liked your sense of humor, mate. It's sick. I think half the kids on campus are straight compared to you. Yeah, look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. How long has it been? Six months? At least. Which makes me feel bloody awful. Well, I asked you out here to ask you a favor. Don't be bloody ridiculous. Anyway, I owe you one, remember? That young lady you uh, set me up with on a blind date about a year ago. She was something else, mate. She was there for about six months. New record for me. Yeah, well, look, I'm not looking for setting a record. This does involve a lady. Ah. She's an officer at Wentworth, and, well, everything was going well until a couple of weeks ago. And, and? she was raped. I see. Is she right? No, but she won't accept any professional help, so... And you want me to pretend to be just a friend? No worries. Now, I think this must be the first professional compliment you've ever paid me. I'm going to 
going to a party. Oh. Hey, you can take me if you like. You have to keep yourself nice, but... Shut he up. is keeping himself nice. He's taking Mrs. M, aren't you, Mr. Clear? I'll see you ladies tomorrow, eh? Ah, oh, thanks, Chris. Well, you may be on the wagon, mate, but I'm not. Yeah, well, my budget just won't expand that far at the moment. Well, you're shout next time, all right? It's a promise. Hey, uh, you notice Gina? She's been giving you the eye, mate. I think you're on a winner there if you bomb out with me. Chris. You're a bit touchy, aren't you? Well, yeah, relax, mate. I'll straighten her out. I think I'm counting on you. Have I ever let you down before? No, 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 no. Don't shatter my confidence before I've begun. <laughs> you will tread gently, won't you? Of course. If she ever gets here. Meg will be here, all right. She's a dependable type. Of course she is. To Meg. Um, come on, you know, James. <laughs> you having a good time? Ah, sometimes it's delicious. Hey, it's great to see you. Come on in. I wish I was able to say it's great to be here, but I really... No fudge. You're going to enjoy yourself. Now, come on. I'm going to get you a drink. <laughs> Scotch and water? Scotch and water. Fine, no worries. Everyone, excuse me, I'd like you to meet Meg Morris. Come, come and sit on the couch. you feel more comfortable. Yeah. You ought to be careful, love. Don't be fooled by his little boy lost routine. Friend of yours? Gina? Oh, she's everybody's friend. There are some people here who I'd really like you to meet. Hey, Chris? Hey, Chris. Hmm? Gina, would you like another drink? Hey, what How is about a dance? this? Get Gina Wick or something. Listen, sweetheart. Wonder Boy here is a psychologist. So I wonder he hasn't got you flat on your back by now. Meg, it's not what you think. Meg. Meg. Philip, you'll only do more harm. Meg, please. Get out of my way. Look, I was only trying to help. Oh, you helped, all right. You made me look like a bloody fool. Look, I'm sorry. Just, just leave me. All right, but I'm not going to let you go until you tell me that you care about me. I don't want to care about you. I could have told her that when you love someone, that you trust them as well. Look, I just want you to meet my parents. It's not as though I'll be seeking their approval or anything. Well, that might be a good thing. <laughs> Come on, they'll love you, Meg. Well, as I long as they don't think that this is a prelude to a wedding. So? Are you going to answer my question? Oh, thanks. Yes, I'd very much like to meet your parents. Good, I'll arrange it. You don't even think this is the end of it. Really? I think I'd better go back to work. Yeah, and I better get my softball gear together. I know Mr. Murphy has an unfortunate manner, but I think he means well. Unfortunate? He's ignorant, bigoted, and bloody rude. Now, calm down, Philip. Will it really do so much harm for the women to miss softball and learn how to do a few simple household jobs? No, but it's only the beginning. Look, I've done a lot of work to get the women interested in softball, and if Murphy has his way, it's all going to go down the drain. I doubt it. I am still running, Wentworth. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You may also be glad to hear that the department's finally approved your appointment. You're now on staff and they're backdating your salary to when you first came here. <sighs> great, that's really great. Look, I'm not going to pretend that the money isn't, isn't important, but the real reason I'm at Wentworth is to help the women. If I'm not allowed to do that, then uh, I'd just as soon not be here. Look, I'm sorry about the day. My little uh, blow-up must have been the last thing in the world you needed. Forget it. Then Murphy tends to rub people up the wrong way. But please try and be tolerant. He's new and uh, over-energetic at the moment. Yeah, I know. Look, I'll stay clear of him for a while. Well, as long as there's no more talk about leaving Wentworth, you're definitely needed. Oh, thanks. Shh. Anne's asleep. You don't want to wake her now. Oh, sorry, she must be exhausted. Yeah, I don't know how she manages to cope with everything that's going on around here. I know. I have the greatest admiration for that lady. It shows. Hey, look. About tomorrow night. Oh, do you mind if I call it off? I mean, I, I would love to meet your parents, but I just feel that Anne needs a friend at the time like this. You know she'll protest. And besides, she'll have a policewoman with her. Like a party would be the best thing in the world for you. But I promise I'll have you home early. Hey. There is life after Wentworth. I know there is.
Am I that hard to cope with? Not at all. What's that you're doing? Catching up on a bit of office work, eh? No, I'm working out how we can keep up with the softball practice without overlapping with your handyman courses. Actually, the ladies prefer a handy person. But it's good for them. It teaches them practical things. Not that I'd expect you to agree. You'd rather play games with them, wouldn't you? Look, I think they need physical as well as practical recreation. Look, at my age and experience, I don't expect any Johnny-come-lately yank to tell me how to run prisons or what the inmates need. Mr. Listen. Cleary, I would like a word in private with Mr. Murphy, if you don't mind. Be my guest. Joyce, it's Phil. Uh, yeah. Look, I've been trying to get on to Meg, and uh, there's no answer to her place. I thought maybe she and Anne had come over there for some reason. No, but it's strange that there's no one answering. I mean, aren't they supposed to have a policewoman in the flat with them? Yeah, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, look, there's probably a simple explanation, but... Look, just the same, I think I'll run over there and check that everything's all right. Right. Well, I'll phone Inspector Rouse just in case he's decided to move them somewhere else. OK, uh, thanks, Joyce. Good night. Any luck? No. She's had more than enough time to get there. Well, mate, you don't know she's gone straight home. She could have stopped off somewhere. But there should still be someone at the flat. Look, how about driving me over there? OK. Oh, God. What the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? Three police officers are dead, that's what. Meg, what's happened to Meg? There's no sign of her or Mrs. Reynolds. We have to assume he's taken them with him. Hey, 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 both... hey, take it easy. Yes, I'm sorry. Three of my people are dead. I'm sorry about that, too. What are you doing to find them? Everything we can. Listen, I don't believe he intends to kill them. Certainly not immediately. And what the hell do you mean by that? If he wanted to kill them, he'd have shot them on the spot. My guess is he wants something, he's keeping them as hostages. So I'd say we'll be hearing from him pretty bloody soon. OK? There! If we hadn't had that you argument... There's no need. You know you couldn't have done anything about it, all right? Right. I'm on my way. They found the car. They're checking it for prints. What good will that do? If they switch cars, they could be anywhere by now. One man with two prisoners makes for some pretty awkward travelling. I don't think he'd take them any further than he had to. How the hell do three people just disappear like that? Very easily, I'm afraid. So you're telling me you don't have any leads? We have a specific line of inquiry we're pursuing. Which is? It's too soon to talk about it. I'm going to have a look at the car now. I'll be back later. Look, I'll come with you. No, you won't. Look, four people are dead already in this case. Look, you're telling me I just have to stay here and do nothing? Any developments, I'll let you know. Look, I'm not after news bullets. I'm here because I'm a friend of Mrs. Morris. A close friend. I see. Well, the police are doing everything possible. Look, are you going to pay the ransom or not? I don't think I like your tone. I don't babe. give a damn what you like. Are you going to pay? Well, if this is the sort of cooperation I can expect from the staff, I think we're in a lot of trouble. Meg and Anne who are in trouble, and you don't seem to give a damn. Well, of course I give a damn. But I have every confidence in the police. When this person rings again, there's every possibility the police will trace the call and catch him. But what if they don't? Are you going to pay the money then? Look, surely you people can see that if we give in now, we'll be the target of every crackpot in the state. We have to set an example. And what kind of an example are you setting for the rest of your staff? How does it feel, Joyce, knowing that if some psycho gets his hands on you as far as your precious department is concerned, you're, you're on your own? Please, Philip, calm down. You're not achieving anything. Uh, Chris? Phil. Yeah, look, is that offer for transport still open? Sorry, there's right, no... Right, I need to ride home for ten minutes so I can get a shave and a change of clothes. Right, no, you'll never make it past the gate guard, so uh, I'll have to meet you out front. Is he the lead you were talking about? Yes, he's good. Well, you can pick him up soon enough. Yeah, well, he's not quite that simple, but it gives us somewhere to start. He's got a mother living in Fitzroy. Two of them are pretty close, so she might know something. Hey, was her husband killed in a pub brawl? Yeah, do you know? Well, I know a Lowe in Fitzroy. Uh, she was on my list. Uh, Hazel. Hazel Lowe, right? Yeah, that's her. Hey, Ralph. Look, I'm going home for a while. See you later. Oh, right. Well, we understand the staff and the prisoner being held hostage following the shooting of three police officers Excuse me, last me, night. Is there any way to leave? Let me through. Can you confirm the hostages are prisoners? No comment. Mr. Cleary, I was at the scene of the shooting. I believe you're a close friend what of one of the hell's hostages. What the hell is everything? Look, I said no comment. I mean, we don't expect the women to survive. Is there anything you'd like to say to the no comment? I said no comment. Those women must have known the risk of working in a prison. Do you think it's right that a large sum of tech... Oh.
Don't take it easy, mate. Don't let those bastards get to you. Chris, I need your help. Yeah, what? I'm sick of waiting for the police to do something. I gotta leave. Will you help me? Yeah. Hop in. Okay. You shouldn't have let him get to you like that. You're not still stewing on it, are you? No, it's just what I need is something to hit out at. I'm all right now. Well, would you mind telling me where we're going? Fitzroy. I want to pay a visit on a Mrs. Lowe. Slow down, slow down. There's number 24 on the right. No, Mr. Cleary. I always thought you was fair dinkum. Don't know who to trust anymore. Fancy telling a mother something like that. You're just like them bloody coppers. Mrs. Lowe, please. I'm not trying to hassle you. I just want to find Brian so that I can talk to him. Well, you can't. Brian wouldn't do that. He wouldn't. Then help me talk to him and we can clear up this misunderstanding. Don't you think he's been through enough? He done time for something he didn't do. Then when he gets out, I had to tell him about Phyllis. Poor kid. You leave him alone. So, Lo, I'm begging you. I've got to talk to him. And quickly or it's going to be too late. My son's paid his debt to society. Why can't you mongrels leave him does, alone to get on with his life? Does he have access to a flat or something, some place we could take two people without anyone knowing. You're still saying he done it, aren't you? Oh, I'm wasting me bloody time talking to you. Listen, as much as I love him, I'm the first to admit he's a lazy little bugger. He couldn't be bothered. He can hardly get out of bed in the mornings. Why would he do it anyway? He doesn't need the money. He's just as happy to stand in line for the doll every week. If you week. believe that, if you really believe that, then you've been going through life with your eyes closed. Have to face reality. Don't say that to her. Brian! Nobody talks to Mum like that. Nobody. Where have you been, love? I've been awfully worried about you. I'm all right, Mum. I can take care of myself. Who says I can't get out of bed, eh? I did it, Mum. What? What do you say? I kidnapped them two women. I thought it all out myself, Mum. I want you to go and unpack a bag because we're going away. Ryan, you're not serious. Where are they, Lowell? Shut up. Tally, damn it. Tally. Around. Ryan. Get off. Sorry, Mum.